It's maybe 10 days before Passover. Jesus is heading up to Jerusalem. The disciples are fearful because they know that last time they were there, they were threatened. The chief priest has given out an order that if anyone knows where he is, they should report it so that Jesus can be executed. And so they are somewhat nervous. And particularly, Jesus says, when we go up there, the Son of Man will be betrayed and handed over to the chief priests. And they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him, spit on him, scourge him and kill him. But after three days he will rise from the dead. The disciples still can't get their head around this because they recognise Jesus is the Messiah who is to rule the world. And so James and John have asked Jesus can they sit at his right hand and at his left when he takes up his throne. Their thinking is all upside down concerning the kingdom of heaven. They're thinking as the world thinks. And so he emphasises to them again, that's the world's way, that's not our way. If you want to be great, you have to be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. The reason Jesus will die is that his life is a ransom so that we can live. If he does not die, then we cannot be ransomed and we must die in our own sin. For the redemption of a soul is precious, as David had declared in Psalm 49 a thousand years before. The cost is more than any one of us can bear. So God's answer to that problem was to send his Son, the Son of Man, to die for the sins of the world. Now they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then they warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man and said to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together verses 46 to 52 from Mark chapter 10. This is the final trip that Jesus is making up this dry, dusty road from Jericho to Jerusalem. And he knows what will befall him there. But he is coming to present himself to the people as their king. Most of the crowd don't understand that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. But this blind man has heard about Jesus and that's exactly what he calls out. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This title, son of David, is the messianic title. It is saying, Jesus, you are the one who inherits the throne of Israel through your line of descent from David. And therefore you are the king, you have authority, you can have mercy on me. You have absolute authority. This blind man has confidence in Jesus that all those around do not have. He has spiritual sight, which they do not have. The crowd therefore tell him to be quiet. He's making a nuisance of himself. After all, he's just a beggar sitting on the side of the road, a blind man who can't see anything. He's a waste of space. But anyway, just be quiet. They warned him to be quiet, obviously threatening him to shut up. He cries out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. If we want God's help, we have to be serious and call out and not turn aside at the first little bit of opposition that we might receive. So 
Jesus is aware of the intensity of his cry and stops his walking and commands that he be called. So they tell the blind man, Be of good cheer, rise, he's calling you. Jesus is going to give this blind man an audience. There's crowds of people around him, but this is his moment. He throws aside his garment. For a beggar, your coat is your security. The person who sleeps on the street, the person who is poor, has very few possessions. And the garment is the thing that keeps you warm, your blanket, where you curl up to. But he throws this aside because he is confident that if Jesus is giving him an audience, Jesus will give him his desire. He will be finished with his old life. His life will be made new. He recognises Jesus as the king and he wants to see him. Jesus doesn't presume what his request is. He asks him, what do you want me to do for you? We shouldn't just pray, Lord bless me. We should be specific in our requests. Because if we make specific requests, then we will know that God has answered our request because we will get a specific answer. If we just make a vague request, who knows whether God has answered or not, because there is no specific thing. Some people therefore keep a prayer journal that they can look back and see the things that they have asked the Lord for and give him thanks for those things that he has done for them. So Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man says Rabboni. That's a bit more than Rabbi. Rabbi means teacher, but Rabboni means my teacher, my Lord, my great one, that I may receive my sight. There is a testimony of commitment. My great one, my Lord, my master, in using that title, and that he may receive his sight. And Jesus says, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Do whatever you want, Jesus says. You have trusted me and I give you your sight. And immediately he could see. But what did he do? He didn't go away. He followed Jesus on the road. And we'll find that when they got to the other end of the journey, the whole crowd will be calling out, Son of David, Hosanna to the Son of David. As he went on the road, he told others, you know who this man is. He's the king. He's the son of David. He will rescue us. He will save us. For now it was time for the announcement. Jesus had told his disciples, don't tell anyone I'm the Christ. But now it was time that they should know who their king was. And this blind man, who was able to see what many others around could not see, is the one who bears testimony to Jesus. Most people in the story of Jesus are not named, but this man is named, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. No doubt Mark knew him, for Mark was growing up in Jerusalem at this time, and the believers gathered in Mark's home, so that Mark could bear testimony to the testimony that Bartimaeus bore to Jesus. There's much discussion in the scriptures about those who are blind and those who see, and we all think that we have an understanding of things and that we can see. But in fact, many of us have a very incomplete understanding. We don't understand clearly at all what God's plan and purpose is, even in our own lives and in our own time. Which is why we need to humbly meditate on the word of God and ask Jesus to give us sight. The blind man was not going by sight. He was going by what he had heard about Jesus. Whenever people walked past, as Jesus had come through Jericho previous times, he had learned a little bit about Jesus from what people were saying. And as he put together the little pieces, he came to the conclusion that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was the Christ. He might be called Jesus of Nazareth, but he was indeed 
the son of David.